All right, we're live. Yeah. Woo, I am it. live with Kristen Vining. How are you? I'm wonderful. Wonderful, Represent, wonderful, 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 wonderful. Representing the great state of North Carolina. Yeah, we're actual. Well, actually, two states. So we're dual agents. So we we really? serve Charlotte, and then we dip down into kind of the Upper Piedmont area of South Carolina. So we cover places like Fort Mill, South Carolina, Rock Hill, South Carolina, Indian Land. Um, and funny enough, a lot of Charlotteans kind of come down across the border, one for taxes and two for schools in York yeah. County. Fort Mill school districts are uh, top ranked South Carolina uh, schools. So they, they get down here for the schools. Taxes and schools, all important uh, when considering real estate, right? Yep. Amen. Well, I am so stoked to have you on today. We got so much to talk about, um, and I know you got a lot of value to drop today. And so let's start off just kind of by talking about your background. You've not been doing this very long. You've had a ton of success, but where does where does your work ethic, where does all this stuff, where does it come from? The Lord, buddy. Jesus. <laughs> First and foremost. First and foremost. He made me who I am. No, it's... Um, you know, I, 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 my, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. I am definitely my daddy's offspring. I just, I've always been a super gritty worker and I love to build. I love to build things. And, um, we've built several businesses in the past and I'm a firm believer that people buy people. And the beautiful thing is that any of the businesses that we've had in the past, they've just, they followed us because they trust us. So kind of my background is I photographed weddings for uh, about 12 years. And um, I had the privilege of um, being able to photograph a, a well-known person by the name of um, Stephen Curry and Aisha Curry. Yeah. So um, they're from our area. And it was a really, um, what a what a um, pleasure it was to photograph an honor to photograph their wedding. Um, but you know, there was something about rolling into age 40 that both Ken and I were kind of like, okay, what are we gonna do with this next phase of our life? And it was over Christmas break and um, and it was 2000, Christmas 2014, no, Christmas 2013. Um, went downstairs and I said, babe, you're not gonna believe what I just did. He said, what? He said, I, said, I just signed us up a real estate school. He's like, oh, okay. And I said, we gotta figure this out. And we always had a vested interest in buying and selling ourselves. So it was a natural, kind of thing for us to, you know, if nothing ever came of it, then nothing came of it. But, um, but something came of it. So something definitely came of it. Okay? Yeah. And we're, and we're definitely going to talk about that. So you're, it sounds like you're a serial entrepreneur, right? You've, you've started businesses before you've run successful businesses and it, that's kind of a passion of yours. And, and you're, from what I'm hearing, it sounds like that, that comes from your dad, right? A lot of it, and my mom too. My mom is definitely a hard worker. Um, my, I have my dad's spot, like his spunkiness, I guess. Um, but no, yeah, I, I do come from a from a long lineage, I think, of entrepreneurs. Yeah, just doing their own thing. Cool. So, um, talk about you, you. You you obviously you were doing the whole. Um, you run the photography studio, and you're still doing that to some extent, right? You, I think you no, have um, no, somebody no, else. No. I'm totally, I hung it up. I'm totally retired. I shot my last wedding in 2015. There's no way that I could do both at a high level. Okay. So okay. I um, retired from that. And uh, in the beginning, I did photograph our listings before I realized that I was not a real estate photographer. I'm a people photographer. Two totally yeah. different puppies, right? It's like buyers and sellers. They're two different puppies. Um, and I uh, realized about six months into it, um, Ken and I were exhausted. We were sacrificing our family, our kids. We have 11-year-old twins now. Um, and we closed 38 houses our first year in business and we were essentially doing it by ourselves, just he and I. So we knew real quick that we needed to start building a team. Our first hire was an assistant. We followed a, a, a team model um, that uh, was, is, it's a great model. So, um, but we, we, we made our first hire was an executive assistant and whew, let me tell you. So yeah, we, 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 we fired and we'd be hired and we fired and we'd be hired. And we're, we're finally at a place where we feel like we're lean and mean and right and tight. Yep. So talk about like, I know everyone's wondering, I mean, you, you, you kind of gloss over it um, because it, it, it probably comes easily to you, but you know, there's a lot of people watching and, and wondering uh, how you do 38 deals your first year in the business. Like, where did you start? What did you do? Where did you get information from? Yeah. Um, so open houses, we pounded them. Our sphere, we pounded them. Um, lunches, getting belly to belly, not being afraid to ask for business. I'm not afraid to ask for business. And I'm always asking from business from my heart. So every 
everybody has a vested interest in real estate, right? If we don't own a home, we want to own a home. And I truly care about that. I really do. In my heart of hearts, this is not about a commission. It's never been about a commission. Mm -hmm. um, yes, sure. We need to make money because it's what the money provides us with. You know, it provides us to be, um, pay our bills and go on vacation and yada and retirement. But for, for us um, right now, I'm working with so many brand new agents that don't even know where to start. And my advice to them is you've got to go get dirty. You got to get out there. You have to open your mouth and you've got to talk and you need to use social media and you need to remind everybody on social media what you do. And it doesn't have to be bragging on yourself. It doesn't have to be, you know, it, 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 sharing information of value about others. So like for instance, over the holidays, we do this gifts of Christmas and it's, we partner with our favorite allied resources and our allied resources give away these beautiful gift cards to big box retailers because that's what everybody wants at the holidays. My job for 24 hours this year was for 48 hours was to promote them, talk about their business, talk about their rates, talk about what they do, talk about some specials that they've got going on. And so through that information of value, it's proving us to be showing that we're experts, right? We've mm -hmm. got the people that we can align them with. I mean, just as we were chiming onto this live right here, I was just talking to a prospective seller. And the question was, well, I think I need to paint. I think I need to do carpet. Do you have those people? Yes, sir. We absolutely do. And we're going to go on with that builder mentality, go with that builder mentality that we are going to try to get things as inexpensive as possible so that we can get you top dollar and quick. Yep. So, you know, it's, it's, it's just that year one is tough. It's tough. It's sacrifice. It's that iceberg, right? It's, it's mm -hmm. you see that success, that tip of the iceberg that sits out and people just see success, success, but they don't see all that it took to get up there. And mm -hmm. so that first year in real estate, you're building that. But you got to build trust in people. People have to know that, you know, you've aligned with people that can help get you there. Yeah. Yeah. No doubt about it. So your business has absolutely exploded, right? I mean, a hundred, you've done over $107 million in three years. And, and like, that's almost unheard of. Like it just almost never happens in our industry. And so like, talk about the, the natural progression of your business. And, and I, I would say it's, Talk about the unnatural progression because there's really nothing natural about the way you progress so quickly. Um, obviously, you've taken a and I'm just guessing here. I'm going to say you know a lot of those 38 transactions, you reinvested a lot of the money you made back into your business, and I would assume that that helped expedite your growth a little bit. Talk talk a little bit about how you experienced so much growth in such a short period of time. So we did reinvest it and we, we, we reinvested it into, um, in a, in a, uh, a, I don't want to call it untraditional way. Let me, so first of all, it's four years. So all of 15, 16, 17, 18. So those four years was the 107 and a half million, right. That yeah. we done close volume. Um, three months out of the last four years, we've bought leads. We don't okay. buy leads. It, they, they, they don't work. They, they, we closed one transaction as a result of those three um, months of buying it through at the time we were using a, a CRM out of, out of it, Boomtown. Okay. So we're doing Boomtown leads. Um, okay. Love Boomtown. I'm not going to, I love Boomtown. Um, the, the, it, we, 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 we buy nice closing gifts. We send gifts to clients at Christmas time. we, we love on our clients. We we pay for things when we go out with them. I mean, it, we are. I mean, our tagline is relationships first, real estate second. And where we put our, I mean, I, I just spent five hundred dollars on love pop cards because there's these cute little cards. They're ten bucks a piece, and up pops a little house. And people remember that kind of stuff. So I mm -hmm. place our marketing dollars into warm, fluffy, fuzzy, yummy relational stuff. <laughs> Like I'm all about swag. I'm about I'm about t-shirts and sweatshirts and bags and nice closing gifts. Like I said, I, the 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 year one we, we we did play red light green light. We we did expect to make two dollars and we spent a dollar. Um, but you can't teach grit. You got to have yeah. it. If if you don't have that and you don't want to get out there and work on the weekends and work at night. And even now here, we're going rolling into our fifth year. I mean, I didn't stop working until like 10 o'clock last night. I was having conversations. I was having Zoom calls. I was, you know, my job is to bring leads to the table. So I have to talk to people 24 seven. Yeah. So are most of your leads at this point coming from um, your past clients and, and your database? Yep. It okay. Well, 
So, no, Facebook is number one, is our number one source of business, Facebook. Okay. So, so Facebook. People tag, us, people tag us, hey, I'm looking for a realtor. It's race to the courthouse. I am the first one there. When and, and as soon as I'm tagged, and if I'm five minutes late, I don't have it. Someone else got that right. Somebody else is snap. Well, think about it. I mean, people are, I mean, you and then you get 185, 185 tags of different agents that are all great, but then they get overwhelmed and they don't know where to start. So we really try to be the first ones out there. So social media is number one for us, followed by sphere, sphere of influence, uh, sphere, sphere referral, past client, mm -hmm. past client referral. That's the order. Okay, so you're you're taking that money that um, many agents would have invested in lead generation, and you're investing in relationship generation. Relationship generation. <laughs> this this year this year is my hashtag year of friendship. I'm getting back belly to belly with all my friends this week. I'm getting back to the basics. We're in a neutralizing market right now, and buying leads and it, it's just not working. It's not yeah. working for us. So for us, what works is building those relationships and keeping top of mind with our friends, but doing it from a place of authenticity and gen like genuineness. It's not, I'm not, I'm not friends with you because I want you to send me leads. I'm friends with you because I really want to hang out with you and have a glass of wine. Like I yeah. want to catch up with you. I want to know what's happening with you. Um, and I think that that is, I, I think that that's the, the basics of business. We have yeah. to do that. I agree. So let, let's get a little granular here. If you don't mind, let's talk like you're, 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 you're a ton of your business is coming from Facebook and, and I know everybody that's watching right now is like, all right, what the hell are you doing on Facebook to sell, you know, millions and millions of dollars worth of homes each year. So let's dive into your strategy on Facebook. Tell me what that looks like for you. Yeah. So we have a, um, a CRM that allows us uh, KD core to capture leads by using a link um, out there on social media to drive traffic to our website, to capture that information. So that's number one, um, is making sure that we're promoting that and promoting it at a high level. So we get into, I dig deep into the demographics. So let's say that we've got, um, like for instance, this past weekend, we had a Cotswold listing. It's a it's a, a, a higher end area. It's a very um, cool part of town. It's super close to dining and entertaining, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so I go in there and I boost post, I, you know, it's, it's like an ad and then I'll just narrow down the demographics of the people that I'm trying to reach that I know are, it's going to pop up in their news feeds. You know, the other thing that I think is really important is Facebook has changed their algorithms and we have to like the way that Facebook looks at us. Um, if we're not liking each other's stuff and we're not commenting on each other's stuff, then Facebook says you're not friends. Right. So like, I want to come and like your stuff and comment on your stuff. And I want the same reciprocated because then Facebook goes, oh, okay, great. I'm going to show more of their stuff in their newsfeed. So the more that I'm actively participating over with my friends by loving on their kids' pictures or, you know, congratulating them on the success of something, then Facebook goes, okay, cool. Well, you know what? Good job, Kristen. I'm going to show more of what you've got going on on your newsfeed in the news feed so that they can or on your wall on your post in their news feed so that you mm -hmm. pop up first top of mind top of mind top of mind got it and so when you post a listing like that and you do a boosted poach post how much do you think you're spending on something like that um i will spend so I, i'll do several like i like to test things so um one with like the kv core link then what i this last weekend i took um my favorite pictures from the listing and I put in, again, you've got to do this on a business page. This can't be done on a personal page because the personal mm -hmm. pages are very limited. So um, when I first got started in the business, formed my, my team binding group page. And of course, I went over to my personal page and I was, ha I was inviting everybody to come like it, like it, like it, like it. I built up a little content first, right? Some comps in the neighborhood or in the area, what was happening in around the community, put all that out there first. So there was some information of value that was already built out for them, mm -hmm. but I didn't overthink it. And it just went for it, right? So then from there, um, okay, so now we get you start getting listings, right? So with your listings, what I like to test is not just the CRM link, but I also like to do another post where I just give the pictures, right? The yummy, delicious pictures. That's what gets people into the door. And I give right. them just enough information that if they like the pictures, they're going to reach out because they're going, well, where's that house out? How's that house at? Or Chris, mm -hmm. what's that MLS number? If it's an agent reaching out. Sweet. You know what that just happened? What just happened? I just opened up a line of communication. So that I can start asking questions to find out, do you have a buyer that would possibly be interested? When can we get them scheduled to come in and have a showing? Or if it's an unrepresented buyer? That's fantastic, right? We're trying to find buyers out there online that we can help serve. 
Or maybe it's somebody who has representation. The first question I ask is, do you have an agency? Do you have agency with another realtor? Do you have a signed agency agreement with another realtor? And if so, who's your realtor? I want to reach out to them. Right. By the way, do you know about EXP? <laughs> so. Yeah. And yeah, awesome. And, and so and then the and then the other one is your forced registration, right? So you're if you're putting in the Katie Core link or uh, a Boomtown link or a Commissions Inc. link, right? And and then they click on that particular the, they look at the photos, right? They click on the link and then they get a forced registration, right? And then you're drawing in leads that way as well. Yeah. Now, talk, like so for me, that, right? They don't like the forced registration, so they'll move on. Yeah. So that's why I try to test a couple of different things on each property so that I'm capturing, you know, it, it, it from different perspectives. Yeah. You're appealing to a broader audience is what you're saying. Um, so, t so talk about like, like there's a lot of strategy that most people don't know that goes into this because like people have a tendency, right? And people do this in our market and I know it's a mistake. They will, they'll take like a, a $2 million listing and they'll advertise a $2 million listing when our bread and butter, the bread and butter in our marketplace is like, you know, 200 or, or 175, you know what I mean? And, and what happens is they'll just get a bunch of looky-loos looking at pictures, right? And they may generate a couple leads, but they're probably not legit. So talk about your strategy as it relates to the listings you post and the leads you generate. Um, so you're talking about like price points? like Yeah, yeah. like price point. Talk specifically about price. Like I would assume like, you don't make that same mistake where you're pro you're posting you know a four or five million dollar listing if you know that you know your demographic for what you're for the leads you're looking to generate is going to be somewhere between one hundred seventy five and two hundred seventy five thousand dollars. Yeah, I don't know if I can. So we don't. I the um, let's see the the our our largest listing was one point three million. No, I, let me take that back. Hold on, land. We've got land under contract right now, eighteen acres. I can't say what it's for, but. Um, it's over 2 million. Um, okay. you, you know, the strategy there is that I am going to go, yes, I'm going to probably narrow down that demographic if I'm going to go do a, some sort of like based on demographic po um, post. I don't know if I should, is that in violation of RESPA? I don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. You heard it here, folks. <laughs> <laughs> Scratch. Um, yeah, no, I, 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 I I don't know if I can answer. Well, that why, don't we, why, don't, why don't let me let me rephrase that? How okay. important how important are the demographics when you are posting a, a a particular listing? So I I chunk it down based on area. Mm -hmm. So if it's if it's if it's say Cotswold this past week because it was the one's top in my head right now, I'm going after a huge radius in Charlotte because Cotswold will pull like people who may have jumped the border came into South Carolina but realize they don't like the drive, they need to get closer to town. So I want to pull people in people in from this demographic or from this part of the part of the part of the part of town. Um, right. I don't know if that, that probably doesn't answer your question. That's not that's not helpful at all. <laughs> well I just I, I guess what what I really want to know is like and I think probably the audience is like let's just let's just say I'm a I'm an agent and I have you know one listing and my yeah. one listing is you know it's it's a two hundred and fifty thousand dollar listing. Uh, what would you recommend that agent do? The, the agent maybe doesn't have a budget like you, uh, but they want to get their listing sold and they want to get it in yeah. front of the right audience. Yeah. Um, I say just annihilate the post like I, I, I on average I'll probably spend like last weekend I want to say that I was in the ballpark of maybe $250 between all the different ways in which I marketed and this house is on the market for 560 um, I mean I don't really per se have a marketing budget for each I do whatever it takes to get it sold if it, it in right. if I see higher days on mark I mean the longer it's on the market the more it's gonna cost me so, um, but you know, the other thing that I do too is reverse prospecting through the matrix. Um, you know, anytime something's favorited, I'm reaching out to that agent to see about getting it sold. Um, we, if I know that there's another agent that is strong and that is a strong selling agent in that area, I'll let them know, Hey, I've got this coming soon. Or, Hey, this just popped on the market. What other buyers do you have in that area? If that's an area that they geo farm, um, you know, I, I am, I am a firm believer of asking for help. If I have um, if I have friends that are strong in one particular neighborhood, I'll say, "Hey, do you mind sharing this link? There's this house that just went live in your neighborhood." Mm -hmm. um, I'm just not afraid to ask, um, right? Just because it's genuine, and and I would do the same. So that I just think it's so cool because, like, you know, I, it sounds like you know Facebook being you know 
you're probably your main marketing strategy, or not your main, but your top marketing strategy right now for generating business. So are you, do, would you say you're generating more buyers or more sellers on Facebook? Um, on Facebook, I don't know that stat. That's a great one. Um, yeah. I would say that they are uh, right now they're going to be heavier. Well, let's see. And it's since January third, we've taken eighteen listings. So to ask me today, we're listing mm -hmm. heavy. We okay. have a ton coming to market, and of those listings, let's call it. Uh, uh, off the top of my head, just for the last three weeks since January third, almost a month now, um, thirty percent of it has come from social media. Okay. And wow. um, out That's of them, huge. actually, many of them are moving Germany, Virginia, Jersey. They're all moving out of state. They're all moving out of this market. Okay. Um, which is interesting. Again, we're it, 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 we're so relatively new in terms of, of of being in the business for the period of time that so many others have been that we've never. I've never been through a shift. Yeah. I, I don't know what it's like to be in a neutralizing market. I mean, last year we were 60, 40, 60 yeah. buyers, 40 listings um, in terms of percentage. And this year just, my buying department's like, what's going on? I'm like, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, that, that's that just so you know, that's what happens. I mean, what, what, what happens is, and as you get more past clients um, and you build those relationships and you invest in those relationships, most people uh, are recommending you to when they if they hear somebody that's you know selling a property right they're going to recommend you call Kristen because she helped me now they'll do the same thing with buying and there, to some extent you can't control you know because um, it's it's really up to that person who had the conversation depending on whether they were buying or selling right but so right now you've got 18 new listings based on you know at which 30 percent are from from Facebook but it may be from, you may not even know, it may be a, a cumulative effort of all your marketing efforts, just you being out there and commenting on different things where people now are starting to recognize you more. Right. And so as the person to list the home with, as where maybe in the past, some of the listings were generating buyers. And so you were working buyers more, right. where now as your efforts are more, uh, maybe they're more referral based. I right. don't know. Just that's yeah. Well, it cycles, right? I mean, yeah, you're right. There are people here recently that we did buy with in the last couple of years and um, now they're ready to sell already. So right. they're becoming sellers. So you're right. It's, it is, it's a, it's interesting to grow in this business. So how are you like, what do you, I would assume that you guys have some awesome system in place for nurturing your um, past clients. So what are you guys, what are you guys doing? Like, I mean, are you doing parties? Are you doing um, birthday gifts? Give me the rundown on that. Yeah, we so we've done yes, yeah, so we we we've done client um, events. Um, so last year was a bit of a, a, a tumultuous year for us, or I, and that, that may be a strong word. Um, let's it was it was a um, a questionable year. So we we had some change over on the team. We changed brokerages, um, and then in September when Florence Hurricane Florence came through our area, um, there was a, a 150 year old tree, 14 foot diameter that came crashing down on our offices. Uh, oh we were with Keller Williams um, uh, the first part of last year. So the, for, for three and a half years, we were with KW. And this past uh, June, we switched over to EXP. Um, and um, so we had the quote unquote mega agent office um, mm -hmm. that that KW um, uh, that we went through with KW. So um, so from September kind of through December, like we we were just kind of like all over the place, just a little disoriented, still trying to stay on top of business, um, still had a really strong year. Um, I've already forgotten your question. I don't know how I got off on that tangent. What was your question? <laughs> no, 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 no. Well, I, I think like oh, you're asking so how do I how do I love on clients? Like what am I? Yeah, like your past clients and stuff. Because like what I can what I can tell about you, and I need to do a better job of this. Is is like I mean, we have systems in place, but yeah, you know, you can get into a you can get into a system where it becomes less about caring, less about loving, and more about the system. And yeah. it, I don't think that that's happening with you. So I want I want to hear a little bit about how you're loving on your past clients. Yeah. So we I I got an email the other day from a past client two years ago. She received her home anniversary card, her home anniversary card. So we every month we at the beginning of the month, it doesn't matter what year they close, they get a home anniversary card. To let them know that we're thinking about them. And then mm -hmm. she reached back out. She's like, Oh my gosh, thanks so much for thinking about us two years later. Um. Then we've had client appreciation parties. Um, they haven't been real successful for us. It maybe it's just because it's been off days that we've chosen. I know that there's some teams that have some huge success with that. Um, mm -hmm. We will. I believe in the unexpected gift, the just because gift. 
Um, mm -hmm. Yes, we send out stuff over the holidays and stuff, but I, you know, my husband makes a really good rum cake. And so we made like, I don't know, we made like 20 or something rum cakes and I just chose 20 people to go drop off, you know, rum cakes to this past holiday season. Um, this month right now, I've enlisted the help of my mother-in-law. We've got Valentine's Day coming up. Friday kicks off Love Month. And a new thing that we've got coming out is um, the last couple of years, I ca I've called it Vining Times Day. Our last name is Vining. Happy Vining Times Day. And so I went to Target. They've got these cute little box of chocolates in the shape of a heart. They're $1. You put them in a cute little package and then you mail them off. And we're going to send about 200 of them out. So I've enlisted my mother-in-law to stuff those for me, to work our CRM, to pull the addresses and write him, you know, and for, you know, I'm going to write the message for her, but to have her kind of, you know, help us be able to get that stuff out because this takes a tribe. I, I, I talk to people all day long and I wish that I could personally like handwrite each one of them. And maybe I shouldn't be, maybe I shouldn't be divulging this right now because I don't know who's watching. <laughs> I wrote it. No, not really. Cause my handwriting is awful. She's my mother-in-law's got beautiful handwriting and listen, our director of operations, man, she is the glue. She keeps us on top of our toes. We've got, we use another, we've got a couple different CRMs that we use. Mm -hmm. um, Brevity, I mean, Brevity is one of them and it's just, we've used it for years now and it's just, it's, we're, it's second nature for us. So it's hard for us to leave it. It's hard for us to change. Um, and it, there's tasks and checklists and, and I mean, she'll see like Kristen, Hey, you'd reach out to this client, Kristen, Hey, did you send this thank you card? Hey, Kristen, did you send a gift to this client? So, and at the one year mark, we try to send a little something extra special, not just a card. Um, that's something new that we've actually just started. So our clients in two years are gonna be like, oh, I didn't get a, I didn't get an actual present from you at my, I get, oh, they got a card. So we're trying to, we're trying to stay on top of that. Yeah. You know what? Like I, what I so admire about you, man, is that fact that, I, I mean, I see a lot of similarities in our two businesses is where I think on the surface, a lot of people think we have it all figured out when in reality, you know, we're, we're still learning along the way. Like it, we're on our journey. We just may yeah. be in a different spot in our journeys. And so I, I love that. I love hearing that, you know, in, in, in your story. And, and I, I mean, I think that what, what's going to happen with you is that, you know, you, you've only been in the business for, you know, uh, just a few years, right. You're in your fourth year and, and like, I can't imagine where your business is actually going to go like year five, 10, because of the, of the actual, re the referral business that you'll generate, right? Most, yeah. most of your business right now is still first time business. Yeah. And, and yeah. you're really good at building relationships. And so what I think what, what's going to happen over the next few years is your business is going to double and then maybe double again. I don't know um, if I want that though. It's, you know, it, I, thank you. That's humbling. Um, so one of the things, so being at Keller Williams, it, I felt like I always had to be up on this big leaderboard, right? If I, if I didn't make that, if I didn't make that team meeting board, I felt like a, there was a part of me that felt like a failure. And I know I'm not a failure because I mean, heck, we could have, we, you know, we closed several million that year or that month. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I, one of the things since switching over brokerages is that we really reevaluated what we want as a team and what we want as our family. Like, our family, what do we need? I didn't get into this business to be, you know, to do a thousand units in a, in a year. I, I don't, I don't want that. And, and I yeah. think that's the beautiful thing about this industry is that you set your goals based on your work-life balance and what makes you happy and what drives you. I, I, I will, I, yes, I want, I seek financial freedom. We all seek financial freedom, right? Um, and I'll never stop working because I'm the type of person that just has to keep my head completely stimulated all the time. Um, but I'm not willing to sacrifice my family, um, or my client's love for wanting to work alongside of me as well, mm -hmm. because I'm trying to, you know, because I have to do 250 units in a year. I, yeah. I, I don't, that's not even a goal of ours. As a matter of fact, it's a very modest goal this year. Um, and it's, um, and we're happy with it. It's what, it's what our family needs. And I, and, and I think that message needs to be out there loud and clear because, Somebody could be coming into this and saying, no, I don't, I don't want that. I just want to come in and do 20 or 30 transactions a year and just have an assistant that can be alongside of me. And that's, that's a game changer. And the other thing that I love about this business is that we are providing so much opportunity for teammates. So I've got a couple of agents right now that I'm kind of nurturing and I'm like, you know what? And they're struggling. They're, 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 they're feeling like I can't get buyers. I can't get sellers. I don't know what's going on. I'm working, I'm working, I'm working. 
And so when you dig deep into what people want, like, what do you want? What makes you happy? If you could wake up every single morning and do one thing in this business, what would it be? Well, I like to show houses. I said, fantastic. Well, why don't we do this? Let's shift your mindset from working, from going after buyers and sellers. And let's go after agents. Let's go ahead and start a business that says showing partner at the bottom of it. And you go to agents and say, here's my business. And here is what I can offer you. I can show, I can just open houses for you if you'd like. If, if it's something simple and you're going on vacation and you want me on call, let me be that person for you. Or if you want me more involved, like we've got a showing partner model on our team and she gets a percentage of the buyer agents um, commission so that the buyer, it's, it's leverage. Whether the, whether the buyer agent decides to use it just to free up more time for her family or the buyer agent decides to use that time to be able to generate additional business, it's leveraging that time. And so it, it's a it's a beautiful thing. There's part, the showing partner model. I think is brilliant. But I believe yeah. it's placed for everybody in this business. And as realtors, we're doctors. This is how I like to look at it. We're doctors' offices. The doctor doesn't check you in. The doctor doesn't take your vitals. The doctor's not the one that's out there filing with the insurance, marketing the company. No way. The doctor's to diagnose the problem and get you healthy. Our job is to negotiate the contract and get you to the closing table. You can't do it all in this business. Not at a high level. And those yeah, trying I, to do it are they're not we're not superhuman. I just gave that analogy to somebody like I had a I had a recruiting meeting earlier today. I gave that exact same analogy. It's it could, yeah, yeah, it really is. And what 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 what's great about that model is if you explain it, it makes so much sense because the reality of it is when you get to hire somebody out to do your administrative work, there you're putting somebody in there that is fulfilling a need for them, right? In other words, that's what they're good at. That's what they like to do. And salespeople usually are not really great at doing administrative work. They're just not. Lord, no. I'd have been out of this business a long time ago if I have to do, if I had to keep doing what Lori does for us. And see, that's what then Lori is polar opposite. She 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 does not want to sell to save her life. She's yeah. licensed in both states, stays active and, and keeps it all up. But she, man, she gets here at 7.30 every single morning. She's ripped, ready and roaring to go. And she holds this team accountable. And she loves to see us out there selling. She's our biggest cheerleader. Yeah. And that so home talk, home got so much systems and processes in place, it kills me. Talk about like, um, how is your team structured today? Yeah. So today we're five. You got Ken and I, my husband, okay. we started the team. We only do listings and the occasional buyers for what we like to think are kind of our VIPs, right? People mm -hmm. we have really long history, like really long relationships with. Um, and it's also good for us to take a handful of those a year because it keeps us brushed up on our skills of, you know, the other, the other mindset. Um, then we've got two buyer agents. Um, one kind of doubles as a showing partner. And then we have a director of operations. So our director of operations by herself can handle upwards of 130 units on her own. Okay. And, and when what I is her say, job description? Her job description is, um, <laughs> so, I mean, she is, she is not only the director of ops, but she's also um, our transaction coordinator. She is mm -hmm. our closing coordinator. She does, um, she'll, she'll jump on social media and she'll do marketing of listings for us, especially if we're super busy out there on appointments. Um, and it's because she's so well oiled with her systems and processes and her checklist that she's able to manage um, that many transactions at a high level. So she yeah. handles it all. She, I mean, I can't tell you the last time I went and try and, and put it a listing into MLS yeah. um, or the last time I filled out and offered a purchase. Or the last, I haven't been to a closing in three years. Yeah, that's awesome, man. Um, so, Kristen, I have to ask you because, um, you know, we all have our, our unique story um, uh, of why we made the change. And the thing about your business is, you know, you were, you were not in a bad place, right? I mean, you were a very successful agent. Um, you were with a top company like I was. We were both with Keller Williams. And so I'm curious, why... Why upset the apple? Why why change? Talk yeah. talk to me about that. Yeah. Um, so those who know me n knew I bled red. Um, I was ALC. I was every family reunion. My maps coach is. I love him to this day. Maps coach of the year still to this day. He hasn't been. I don't think he's been. He's he loses his crown. I guess this February in New Orleans family reunion. Um, I bled red. We had a mega agent office. 
Um, I taught Ignite classes, the whole nine yards. Um, and um, the reason that we left was because EXP exists. Yeah. And when you compare the models and you know, it is, it is our responsibility to make smart business decisions. And I, I had the, the EXP had been brought to my attention several times. And I said, no, I was so close minded. I was not interested. I said, no, oh, we were recruited by everybody. And the answer was always, no, you can't do better. You can't beat what we have here. Mm -hmm. Um, and somebody got a hold of my husband and got him to watch Brent Gove's video. And he couldn't get through the video before he was calling me and I was out in the field and he said, what is this EXP thing? And I said, I don't know. I got all kinds of agents wanting to talk to me about it. I tell them no. I'm like, I'm not <laughs> interested at all. Um, right. Cause I was just like, whatever. Uh, and he's like, no, Kristen, I think you, I, I'm going to send you this thing. I think you need to listen to it. And I said, all right. So my husband, and I don't know why I listened then. Cause normally I don't listen to him. So right. <laughs> I was like, okay, babe, I'll listen to it. And like him, I was, I, I got, I got three, three quarters of the way through it. And I was like, there's no way that this is that th there's, there's something to it. Right. If, if it's too good to be true, it usually is. Yeah. Um, and so I spent before I said anything to the person who sent it to him, I spent um, about a, a good solid three weeks. Dude, I, I, I couldn't, I couldn't sleep. I, yeah. I, I, I was looking for information everywhere. I was trying to find podcasts about it. I was talking to people who left, like who came over and left. Like I wanted, I wanted to dispel it. I wanted to say no to, I wanted to say no to it. And in the end, Ken's like, Kristen, you have got to make a decision. What is the decision? And here it was at the end of the day, what do we have to lose? There's right. no risk. If it doesn't you can always out, go back. I can go back. Okay, so it cost me some signs. It cost me, it's pain in the butt. Okay, yeah. it's work. It's a pain. You know what? Life is a pain in the butt. Work is a pain in the butt. I don't look at it that way. But I mean, if I have to go back, then, you know, and then unfortunately, it, it, it not, I don't even say that. It's, we won't go back. Yeah. We won't go back. Yeah. We, 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 we tinkered with the idea of starting our own brokerage. But why would we go do that when, EXP is, I, I mean, I, it, my personal opinion is, um, and I know that there is a model, that is, it, everybody needs something different. But if you are a financial re financially responsible person and you are looking for financial freedom and you're looking to build wealth for your family, um, and wealth can doesn't just mean money, um, but it, it's, it's an undeniable brokerage, first and foremost the support we didn't you don't know what you don't know and when we got over here um we didn't realize certain things were out of compliance we are getting answers to questions faster than we ever have we yeah. iconed this month and we're getting our sixteen thousand dollars back in company stock we didn't get our twenty five thousand dollars back from keller williams we're being rewarded with stock for doing the exact same thing that we were doing there. And we've already accumulated over $11,000. I'm probably not even supposed to be saying that. Oops, that's probably, let me scratch that from the record. Um, no, I think you're okay. I think you're okay. It's, you know, and then we have the opportunity to participate in revenue share. The company's going to say, hey, you know what? Thanks so much for introducing us to this agent. We're gonna pay you three and a half percent of the transaction. And it doesn't come out of the agent side. The company's gonna pay it to you. Okay. I mean, it was, it was a no brainer. And the comp being part of this, and, and, and when you're passionate about something, you share it. And I share EXP as often as I can. Yeah. Uh, as often as I can. And when somebody says no to it, it's okay. But I don't understand. Because if you really look at it, if you really, truly understand the model and look at it, you can't say no. Yeah. What about the agents who say, well, my, my clients won't know who that is. People won't recognize EXP. Oh, no. What do you say to that? Um, I say, well, they don't, they're not hiring the brokerage anyway. They're hiring you. So it shouldn't yeah. matter who you're with. <laughs> I don't understand that at all. Um, yeah. Yeah. No. Um, as a matter of fact, I ran into an agent at Starbucks this afternoon and we were talking about she's with another brokerage and 
Um, and they allow like their own branding and stuff like that. But it, you, you don't have to align with, uh, I mean, I guess I get it sometimes. I, I mean, maybe if you're wanting to focus on luxury, I guess I could get why, you know, the desire to go with like Christie's or Sotheby's would be like an attractive brokerage. I don't know the first thing about those brokerages, but I, I don't know. I don't know. I just do me. And I, I, I dig this company. I mean, the avatars, silly as they are, they're, uh, it's information highway, right? It's a, it's a yeah. tool that gets us to a department that we need to get the answers to it. And yeah, it just, I, avatar. I, I think that, you know, what's great about you, you just, the reason why it's working for you is because you, you look, you don't look at this as a real estate agent. You look at it as a business owner. And yes. I think, I think when you make that paradigm shift, from real estate agent to business owner, um, you are much more fiscally responsible in the decisions you make. And and so as a business owner, there is you, there's no argument that there's a better model. There's just not. I mean, there's not a better financial model if you're looking for specific things like wealth building, right? Mm -hmm. Like passive income, right? Like putting the most amount of money to the bottom line, right? Those are all things that business owners think about, right? Yeah. And real, and a lot of real estate agents don't think about those things. Uh, and, and go ahead. And, it, 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 and it's okay. It's, it's okay. Um, I, you know, even, even my own team, I mean, if we all thought the same, then there would just be a bunch of like leaders out there, you know, empire builders or whatever clashing heads. And we wouldn't have these teams like, even my own team, it's, uh, you know, they love different aspects of the company, but they don't talk about it the way that I do. Um, yeah. We're just, it's, we're different DNA. Um, but you know what? You're right. Ken said to me, my husband said to me last night, he's like, you know what, Kristen? He goes, I don't understand why agents go with brokerages because they're promising leads. Like we never got one lead from Keller Williams. We've never gotten one lead from, any, from EXP. Mm -hmm. well, I, we don't, I don't, I, I think that that's the wrong mindset. I think I, I, maybe I'm wrong and, and I haven't been with a brokerage and I, I certainly don't want to offend any other brokerages out there that do provide leads, but leads are so easy. I, it, it, leads are easy. They're all over the place. The yeah. conversion is hard. The nurturing is hard. The staying in touch with them is hard. That's the hard part. Right. But leads are easy. I mean, you can go drop a couple hundred bucks a month and go get a bunch of leads. You just got to nurture them. It's not going to happen overnight. Right, right. So I, I like for you now, like when you share, obviously, you, you know, I can tell you're really passionate about um, your move and it, and it is a big deal to you. And and you're passionate about getting the word out about EXP. So I, and I always I always ask this question and everybody. Everybody usually answers it differently. Um, but for you, I'm curious, like so for that agent or that broker who's watching or listening to us. And they're they're getting information about EXP, or maybe they're even thinking about making a change. What do you say to that person? Um, I I say do your due diligence. Um, one of the things that I I when I look back and I realize you know how often I said no to it and how often I said no to everybody else, I realize I, I you have you have to look at every brokerage. You really should. I didn't. I just went. I well I'm. So we started Remax. We were there for six months, didn't do a single transaction. Then we went to KW and then things took off. Um, and part of that is because I retired from photography and went all in. Um, and then here comes this disruptor that exists that I couldn't say no to. Um, but I, I, I think that for the people out there that are considering it, I, I think that they need to not just look at this, but weigh it with Maybe there's a hundred percent, you know, maybe there's a, a brokerage that's a hundred percent brokerage there and it's just a transaction fee. And if you do the math and if you're not going to try to do this at a high level and you just want to do two or three transactions a year, this is probably not the model for you. Actually, it's not like you're going to end up paying in. Um, but, you know, for somebody who is going to hit two million dollars, two and a half million, three million, whatever it is. You need to be able to cap. Yeah, yeah. You need to I, get I that percent mark. That's where that that's the, that's the game changer. That's why I, I like even some of these models where I see these big teams, these big teams doing big numbers, like bigger numbers than us, never capping. I'm like, do you realize you spent forty six thousand dollars as an individual agent 
Like, what did you get for $46,000 from your brokerage? Well, they do all my marketing. Okay, what marketing? And then you, you dig down deep and it's like, they provide me with the signs. Dude, do you know how much signs cost? Yeah, not like, 46 grand. Yeah, it's just, but you know, it, some t I what I have found in, um, in, in sharing this model with other agents who are producing is that it's either they're comfortable and they don't want to change. Um, but why? Tell me why. Answer that real quickly. Why? Why? Why continue to pay $46,000 just because you don't want to change? It doesn't make any sense. Is that real estate agent thinking and not business owner thinking? Is that what it is? I don't know. Like, I'm just, I'm asking. I know. I, I know. Maybe things are so second nature and it's just, you know, um, maybe you they're like the people there. I mean, I, I just like, I've heard it all. The they don't even go into the office. They're still right. out there on their own Island. They're just comfortable. And I, 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 I don't understand. I really don't. I don't. I, mm. I think that there are some people that are, you know, I hate it when somebody, you know, I, I hate it. It's a double-edged sword. You feel, Oh, it's just recruiting. It's just a recruiting uh, model. It's just recruiting business. And I'm thinking, I still get emails from Keller Williams that talks about me attending profit share classes and teaching me how to get out there and recruit. Yeah. <laughs> Every business is a recruiting business. I just, it, it's, we're all looking for talent. We're all yeah. wanting to attract talent. And well, even as a real estate agent, you're recruiting, you're recruiting listings, right? I mean, that's every, you're yeah. right. Every business is a recruiting business. It is a recruiting business. Ken and I, so my husband's a huge Clemson, huge Clemson man. He went to Clemson, go Clemson, national champions. Um, and I said to him, I said, you know, is, what is recruiting like in college football? Like, is, does it have a negative connotation stamped to it? Because you've got these recruiters on these big, you know, division one teams that are visiting, you know, kids' homes or visiting, you know, their schools. Like it, it, it would be, an, it's, a, it's an honor to be a recruiter in college football. Like, I think it's an honor to be able to recruit people over to this company. I really do. I, and, and the yeah. fact that we are compensated for attracting over, you know, agents who get it, like people who come over, they're getting it. They understand it. They're not coming here to hang a license. This is not a broker. Yeah. You come and hang a license. Nope. Don't. So I, I, I love attracting agents. It's, I'm going to share it. That's, I, I believe in it. Well, you've absolutely dropped some, some, some good nuggets here today, man. And I, okay. I, I hope people heard this whole thing. And if you didn't, you need to rewind the tape and make sure that you listen to her Facebook strategy. And, and uh, if you have questions, um, feel free to reach out to Kristen. I'm sure uh, I'm sure that she would be willing to share with you. Um, Kristen, if people want to, if people want to learn more about your business or your Facebook strategy, or maybe they want to learn more about eXp, um, how can they get in contact with you? So Facebook is, is the best. Kristen Vining on Facebook. Of course, you can always visit teambindinggroup.com. All of our contact information is there. But I mean, Facebook is is uh, right here where we're at. We're on Facebook. You can just jet right over to my page and hit a direct message. I think I'm capped off. I don't think I can accept any more friends because of um, I, they, Facebook on your personal page puts you at a cap. But um, but I can definitely you go to Instagram. Time to go to Instagram. I'm on Instagram as well. Yeah, I don't. I I I do a lot of syndicating back and forth, but I know. Facebook does not like that. They don't like it when you share. They want original content. Uh, yeah. My Instagram page is more my my kids and my family. I, I do gotcha. not okay. work as much, but yeah. Well, Kristen, thank you so much. Yeah, uh, this absolutely. has been really fun for me. I've learned a ton. That's why one of the reasons why I do these is just because it's an opportunity for me to learn and meet great people. And, and if I can ever do anything or be of help to you, please let me know. And I look forward to hopefully seeing you in an event soon. I love it. I think it's fabulous. Thank you for having me. You bet. Bye. <laughs> See ya. <laughs>